I just got back from the drive around the patch here and I'm gonna spend just a few minutes checking everything over. You know, I've looked inside the engine compartment. Number one is fluid leaks. That's the thing I just want to avoid at all costs. And you really need to think about doing this anytime you have done any major service on your own Mercedes, whether it be diesel or gas. Don't just, you know, change the filter, change the fluids, change the oil, you know, work on fuel lines and then hit the road for a trip. You don't want to do that. Now, this is a good lesson I learned when working on aircraft. After I did major work on my airplane, I would take it around the patch and land it, pull the cowling and give it a good inspection before I ever took off on a long flight. And so is the case when you're working on these old cars. And not even old cars, they could be new cars. Just take it around the block a few times, come back, check everything over, make sure there's no leaks under the car or in and around the engine compartment. And this one's fine. So that passes the test. But in going around the car, there's a couple other things. You know, I'm looking at these tires. I knew this when I got the car. And these tires are eight years old. It, I mean, they're older than eight years, but they haven't been on the road in eight years. And that's really bad when a car sits and the tires don't get moved. The, you know, the cords and inside can rot. So I'm gonna change the tires. Even though I don't see any cracking in the sidewalls, this is something you don't wanna take a chance on an old car that has sat for more than three or four years. Just change the tires, okay? But when I was going around, I thought, well, I'll do a quick a brake test and lo and behold this wheel here is warm to the touch now I didn't drive it very far and I didn't do a lot of braking but this is a sure sign that I've got a sticking caliper and that's probably something that you know I should suspect this car once again has been sitting for a long time that's one of the things you have to really be concerned about are sticking calipers you get out on the road uh, these things can get so hot that you can get a fire and I've seen this on this side of the road. So I'm not ready yet for the big Italian tune-up, okay? It's gonna be tires, new tires, and we're gonna have to get this back on the lift. We're gonna do what I call a brake caliper exercise and power flush on this car. This is a new kit I've just been working on. I think you'll get a kick out of this because I've seen this so many times over the years. If you just flush the old brake fluid out, and call it good, it never works. Because a couple of the key reasons why caliper stickers, they don't get used enough and the pistons don't get exercised. The other thing is the fluid doesn't really get flushed out of the calipers. I tell you, when you just do a flush, if you've got eight year old dirty brake fluid in there, it's not gonna get it all out. So I've been working on this idea of doing what I call a power flush getting some real muscle in behind that uh, flushing system so you can get all that crud out. Take a look at this caliper that I recently removed from another Mercedes. Look at how filthy it is inside. Now this car was only driven in the summer, but the owner said he probably hasn't changed the fluid in four or five years. So, you know, I'm not ready yet. Sorry, folks. We're going to have to get this back on the lift. We're going to do some power flushing and exercising of all four calipers and we're going to check those pads over. I'm going to check the wheel bearings while I'm at it just to be safe. And then, then maybe we're ready to hit the road. And when I go on the, I, I, I'm going to call it the short term Italian tune up. I'm planning a two hour trip when I'm sure everything's good, but maybe a 10 or 15 minute high power speed test for a diesel. Okay. And we'll bring you along and we'll see how this thing performs on the road. When you acquire an old car, particularly one that has not been driven in a long time, you really need to do a complete brake inspection. This is probably going to include replacing some parts and you may need to do what I call a power flush and exercise routine on the caliper pistons. So I have this old Mercedes Benz up here on the lift. This has not driven in seven years. So I suspect I'm going to find some problems. The problems could be many, but the first thing you want to do is make sure that the calipers, pistons are working properly and you want to make sure they're not leaking because if they're leaking, then you're going to either have to replace the caliper with a rebuilt unit or rebuild it yourself. So what I've done is I've removed the wheel and I've removed the two pins on this Bendix caliper here. You know, I was working on the other side. I just have to tell you here, 
This is a tool that we developed here in my shop for pulling injector return hose off these old diesel engines without damaging them. And while we were playing around with this tool, suddenly we have a tool that is almost an ideal tool for working on these old brake systems. You're looking here at these brake sensor wires. I know some of you that worked on these old Mercedes before. You know how hard it is to get these sensor wires out without damaging them. I, you know, you try pulling on them with a regular pair of pliers, you can damage them. So look at this tool here. Suddenly this tool, which was designed for removing a small hose on diesel engines, I can come right in here like this and grab a hold of this sensor wire and just twist a little bit and pull it out. Because just grabbing onto it, I can't even get it out of there. So we'll pull this sensor wire out. Okay. Then we can take and grab a hold of it here and pull it out that way. See that? Look at how slick that is. It's really hard to remove these. A lot of times you don't replace them. In fact, this one's worn. But sometimes if the sensor wire is not that bad, you may want to replace it. And even pulling it out of the pad here can sometimes damage it without having the tool like this to kind of pry it out. So I'm going to get a hold of it like this very carefully work it out like that. There we go. Okay, that one's okay if I wanted to reuse it. Now, using the same tool, let's get these spring clips out. <laughs> I love it when you got the right tool to do the job. Okay, now using the same tool, watch how we can use this to get these pads out. Isn't that slick? Now, once we get the pads out, the next step is to see whether or not these pistons move in freely. Now, we're looking for two things. We're looking for them moving in freely. We're also looking for them leaking. If you push them in and they leak, then you're going to have to reseal the caliper. Okay. This one's totally frozen. Let's see if we get this one moving in. Okay, this one's moving, see that? Not real easy, but look at the leak. See that? Look at the fluid leaking out of there. If you pull your pads out and you either have a frozen caliper, it won't move, with a pry bar like this, or when you push it in, it's leaking, then no amount of exercising or power flushing is going to help. We're going to have to rebuild this caliper right here. Now let's go take a look at the left front one and see if that's any different. Here's another good illustration why when you have one of these old cars that's been sitting for a while, you better be prepared for some major brake work. This really needs new rotors too. There's quite a lip here, and this has got a lot of corrosion pitting in the the rotor face. Look at the pads. The pads are all rusty. So the pads have to re be replaced. Now we're discovering that once we moved the piston a little bit, look at how much fluid is leaking out of the, the caliper. So you're going to have to take this off and reseal it. Let's see if this one is moving both pistons on both sides. Okay, that one's going in easy, but that's the one that's, that's really leaking fluid. Let's see if this one's moving in. Yeah, this one's moving okay. So this one's going to be a little bit easier to reseal than the one on the other side with that stuck piston. But at this point, I've got some major brake work to do. You know, flushing the fluid in the system and doing an exercise program on this car is just futile. We're going to have to do some major brake work because this car has sat just too long. And so it looks like the rescue of the Green Ghost has met up with another roadblock, and that's the brake. So I thought I was going to be able to get this up on the lift, exercise the calipers a little bit, do a power flush. I was hoping to demonstrate our new power flush kit, but not so with this car. It's going to have to have the calipers pulled and overhauled. It's going to need new rotors, new pads. I haven't even looked at the back end yet, and that was one of the wheels that was getting hot. So. Oh boy, and so if you're thinking, hey Kent, when are you going to do the next episode on the Green Ghost anyway? Well, I'm not going to be working on this. I have too many other projects going. Uh, the 
pads are going back in, the wheels are going to go back on, this thing's going to be parked. So I just want to warn you, those who have been following this series of videos on rescuing this 116 300SD, don't wait with bated breath for the next episode. It's going to be a while.